key to understand. Watch this. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. And we thank you that your goodness and your mercy has nothing to do with our circumstance. I need y'all to hear that. We thank you that your goodness and your mercy has nothing to do with what we're going through. In other words, some of us are going through a very painful time right now. Some of us are experiencing transition in our lives right now. Some of us, even sitting here and being here is painful. But we thank you today, God. You're still good. You're giving us mercy. And even in the transition, even in the pain, Father God, you said, I will grace you. And so right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, because who you are and what you do is not connected to what we're experiencing, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we are about to transition. We're about to move from what I'm going through. I'm about to move from how I'm feeling I'm about to move from what I'm facing into what never changes. You always are giving us grace. Father, we thank you. This is the morning service, and you said that your mercy is new every morning. Come on, if you're in this place and you can physically stand, I'm going to ask everybody, can you just stand on your feet? It might hurt, it might be uncomfortable, but I'm telling you, his mercy is here for change. Father, we glorify you. We thank you. This is not a happenstance. This is not a coincidence, God, that we're going through what we're going through. But we thank you that your word says that you have declared the end, too loud, you have declared the end from the beginning. And so even before we experience where we are right now, you had already declared victory. You had already declared breakthrough. And so even though what I'm sitting in, what I'm going through is uncomfortable, it's painful, it's hurting, God, your word, you said, for I know the plans that I have for you, daughter. I know the plans that I have for you, son. I'm telling you, they are good and not evil. Come on, somebody say they're good. Somebody say God's plans are good and not evil so that they can bring me, so that they can bring me to his expected end. Father, we thank you right now that even the pain, you have a plan for it. Oh, come on, somebody, somebody. Even the uncomfortability, even the anguish, you're already ahead of it. And God, it's not going to crush me. It's going to be a vehicle that takes me right to what you planned. Father, we thank you. Oh, somebody just needs by faith. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. I thank you for the calamity in my family. I thank you for the calamity in my mind. I thank you for my, the, the financial situations that are going through, that I'm going through. God, I'm not thankful for it. I'm thankful through it. Oh, somebody catch. God, I'm not thankful for the calamity. I'm thankful, God, that you are walking me right through this. And now we call the peace. Now we declare, let there be a peace that goes beyond my understanding, that guards my heart, that guards our mind. And we thank you that in a storm, I still got peace. In lack, I still got peace. 
in confusion, I still got peace. In the delay, I still have peace. In the denial, God, I thank you. I'm still standing. Oh, I just heard this in the spirit. Father, we thank you that we're still standing because you're still seated. We can stand because you're sitting down, because you're on the throne, because you have all authority and all majesty. So we thank you. We thank you for the engrafted word. Let the word, God, that we hear today, let it confirm this moment. Let us walk out of here, not with a problem, but with power. Allow us to surrender and to submit to your growing process. And we declare or we redefine the pain that we're experiencing. This is not a pain that's going to kill us. We call it a growing pain. Oh, come on. Am I by myself? Come on. Am I by myself? Come on. There's a grace on this. There's a grace on this. This is, this is uncomfortable. I don't like it. It hurts. It's not going to kill me. It's not going to stop me. It's going to grow me. It's not going to kill me. It's not going to stop me. I declare that when this ends, I'll have a new beginning. And anybody receiving the word of God. And for that, we give you glory. We honor you. We praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Can somebody give God a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Oh, I didn't, I, I, I didn't say clap for, clap for Pastor Ted. Can somebody just take, come on now, we do everything in this church. Can we just take a praise break? Oh, come on. I, 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 I feel like somebody just needs to, just, can you just take a break? A break in the pain, a break in the problem, a break in the situation, and defy the devil. I'm still standing. I'm still here. You thought I'd be home crying? I'm here at my church giving my God honor and praise because I'm about to get the instructions to go through this. Is there anybody in this room that's in agreement with the word that was just spoken over your life? Come on, can we give them 20 seconds of a praise break? 20 seconds of I love you anyway. 20 seconds I believe you. I trust you. Father, I'm thankful for you. I'm celebrating the victory right in the pain in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That sounds like breakthrough to me. Come on, that sounds like breakthrough to me. Glory to God. Somebody say, somebody say, either we break down. Come on, stay, stay connected. Somebody say, either we break down or we break through. Somebody say, either we break down or we break through. Choose one. Somebody say, I'm breaking through. Come on, somebody say, I'm breaking through. Come on, you, break, you ain't going to break down, girl. You ain't going to break down, boy. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. Anybody ready for the word of God? Anybody ready for the instructions for the victory that you're about to walk through? Anybody? Make some noise if you're ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, good morning. Family Church, my name is Pastor Ted Winsley, and if I can brag on, on several people, make some noise if you don't have low self-esteem. I'm the pastor of the baddest church. Talk to me. This the, bad, this the baddest church. I'm the pastor of the baddest church in the world. And guess what? And I'm not, I'm not the only pastor of the baddest church. In front of me is my ride or die 31 years last Wednesday. Come on, somebody. That was our anniversary. Winning the game for Jesus. 
Praise God. And we want to acknowledge some very important people before we jump into the word. Those are our first time attenders. Can we turn the lights up just a little bit? If this is your first time with us on a Sunday service, we're not going to embarrass you, not going to ask you to say anything, but we do want to acknowledge your presence. And can you do that by doing two amazing things? Number one, can you just raise your hands in the air? If this is your first time, amen with us at the, at the church. Amen. There's one, there's two. Are there any more? Praise God. That there's three. Amen. All right. Watch this. Keep your hands raised. I asked you to do two things. Number one was to raise your hands in the air. Here's number two. And now wave it like you just don't care. Amen. Praise God. Look at all the rhythm in the room. Can we make some noise for all of our first-time attenders? Amen. On behalf of Pastor Dawn and myself, we want to welcome you uh, to the family church. Um, if you'll notice to your right and your left, uh, for all of our first-timers, if you could get out your cell phones and click on that link. Uh, on your QR code, it'll actually take you to a place where you could give us your information or, um, and, and literally Pastor Don wanna, and I want to send you a special uh, video uh, directly from us to you, just uh, thanking you, giving you some instructions on what's next now that you're here. Um, and if you don't want to do it through, the, through automation, you can just raise your hands and maybe the ushers already passed out to you a, uh, a, a connect card. Praise God. Who's ready for the word? Make some more noise. Amen. Hey, this is a Bible-believing. Make some noise if you're excited to be a part of a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Amen. And here at the Family Church, we have notes. Uh, go ahead and you can get out your, your cell phone uh, and click on the QR code and you'll get a digital download of my notes. Uh, my paper notes aren't up here, Darius. Of uh, my notes and watch this. And if you don't want, there it is. And if you don't want the digital, but you, somebody say, I want some paper, raise your hands and the ushers will make sure that you get the paper notes. Also want to remind you with modern technology, um, we actually have a podcast on Apple and Spotify that you can go on and actually get the sermon. So all of our messages, of course, y'all remember back in the day, you had to pay for the sermons. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? DVD, CDs, come on. Uh, it's absolutely free. So just go on to our mobile app, uh, or excuse me, go to the podcast on Apple and Spotify, and I think also on Android, uh, you'll be able to listen to the messages uh, all throughout the week. All right, here's the last time. Who's ready for the Word of God? Make, make, make some last noise on that one. Amen. Well, well, guys, we are on week or part number four of an amazing series that we started uh, that is already beginning to bless my life. Who's been blessed by this series called You Can't Wait? Make some noise if this is already starting to, to bless you. You can't wait to grow up. And as I share with you, even on Wednesday nights, uh, we, where, where, where's my fire night Wednesday, people? Make some noise. If, if you either watch online, watch this, or, or you're physically in the building, so, so we continue the series uh, on Wednesday night, so make sure that you are getting it. And, uh, and, and let's, let's just jump right in. Come on, turn your Bibles to James chapter 1, verse 2. And we've been learning about how crucial it is to grow up spiritually. Somebody say, it is crucial to grow up spiritually. We actually found out, Paul says that, that, uh, that, that Paul wrote, that as long as we're still children, y'all remember this in, in Galatians chapter 4, he said, for as long, as long as you're still children, even though you are heirs, you don't differ anything from a slave. In other words, even though you have, you, even though it belongs to you, if you're not mature enough to walk in it, you can't access it. And so, so this is what we're learning that, that tell your neighbor, say, you can't wait to grow up. Tell your other neighbor, just point at them. Let's see if they're mature enough to handle this. So say, say, you can't. Come on, and do it back at them. Say, you can't wait to grow up. And so, so that's what we're learning. Um, and, and this is totally, totally uh, blessing me. And, and if you look at the, the notes, you'll realize today we have a subtitle. And our subtitle is, what does it say? It says, why God allows what? Your growing pains. One of the reasons spiritually why people uh, struggle with, with growing spiritually is because spiritual growth is very similar in the sense with natural growth. And how many of you know wherever there's growth, somebody say wherever there's growth, or watch this, or wherever there's rapid growth, somebody say wherever, wherever there's rapid growth, there's going to be some pain. And I, I looked it up that even in the natural growing pains, it happens uh, from the ages of 3 to 12. And, and anybody know why you have growing pains? Anybody in the room know why you physically have growing pains? Okay, all right, I'll tell them. Praise God. 
I'm messing with you. The reason why we physically have growing pains is because when, when the bones, I, I didn't realize this, that bones actually grow faster than muscle and tendons. And so when there is a rapid growth in the bones, you begin to ache physically um, and it, feel, it feels uncomfortable. It feels like tension because the parts that didn't grow up fast have to catch up with what has grown up. And we're going to find out that, how many of you know that in life, that life forces you to grow up? Come on, talk to me. That in life, that there are changes, there are circumstances, there are situations, um, and even God himself is pushing for us to make rapid changes because there's things that God wants to do with your life. But how many of you know that when change takes place or when God is calling for growth, there's going to be some pain? Somebody shout, I'm ready to grow. Bring the pain. Y'all said that real low. It sounded like little kids. Somebody shout, I'm ready to grow. Bring the pain. And the reason why I'm asking you to shout, bring the pain, is because a mature person realizes it's already here. Talk to me. It's already here, and now it's time for you to embrace the process so you can grow through it. Is anybody ready for this? Come on, here we go. Come on, let's read James chapter 1, verse 2. Let's read. It says what? It says, consider what? Uh, consider it a sheer gift. What? Friends, what do you mean when what happens? When what happens? Come on, when tests and what? And challenges come at you from where? Come on, this is the Message Bible. I love it. It says what? Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenge come at you from how many sides? Come on, make some noise if you've had some tests and some challenges and some uncomfortabilities and some pains from every side. Come on, don't make some noise, but it might even be coming from next to you. Just look straight. Amen. Come on, let's keep reading. Let's read. And everybody got somebody next to you, so you think she the pain, well, you might be the pain. Let's read. It goes on. It says what? You know that what? You know that under pressure with me, your faith, what? Your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. How many of you know that, that the most telling time is when you experience pain and uncomfortability? <clears throat> when, 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 when stuff that, what's up, Kev? I see you, baby boy. Amen. Uh, praise God. Amen. I love you too. Praise God. How, how many of you know that... that uh, Brother Kev is, is going through a, a physical situation with his heart. I think yesterday, did you, you, you had a, uh, you, you literally had a um, procedure yesterday? It's on Tuesday, but this brother is sitting here in the front row. Talk to me. Sitting, I'm sorry, I got, I got distracted by his, his faith. I got distracted by his desire to grow. Because how many of you know, watch this, that, that circumstances and situations can bring uncomfortability, but it also brings an opportunity for what's really on the inside to come out. Is this all right? Come on, let's keep reading. It says what? It says, you know that under pressure, what? Your, light, your faith life, what? Is forced into the open. And what does it do? It shows your true colors. It says what? So don't try to get out. Of Y'all ain't even reading. Y'all just let me read to you. Come on, let's read this again. It says what? So don't try to get out of how many things? Come on, it says don't try to get out of how many things? It says don't try to get out of anything. How? Prematurely. How many of you know that maturity stays in the uncomfortability? Maturity doesn't allow the pain to cause you, excuse me, immaturity uh, uh, for, yeah, maturity does not allow the pain to cause you to do things prematurely. To do things because it hurts. To do things because I'm uncomfortable. How many of you know that maturity says, I'm going to stay in this and watch God? Somebody give God a shout of praise. <laughs> Come on, let's read. It says what? Let it what? Let it do its work. Read with me. So you become. Come on, guys. It says, let it do its work so you become. Let what, Pastor Ted? Let the pain, let the uncomfortability, let the challenge, let what you don't like bring something that God has been waiting for. It says what? Let it do its work with me so you become mature and what? 
and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Here's our introduction. Let's read it. It says what? The Word teaches that, read with me, that trials and pain are part of? The Word teaches that trials and pain are part of? Come on. The, the, the Lord told me, he said, this isn't just going to be a church that dances and sings and shouts and spits. He said, this is going to be a church that dances and sings and shouts and spits no matter what's happening. Talk to me. God's been on me all week. On Monday, I had a terrible day. <laughs> oh, m m Monday, I, I, Monday I, I had a day that, that actually literally, can I be honest with y'all? Because I, I, I told the men this, and, and I, I, I think this is, this is mature. Uh, on Monday, I realized I need to get a therapist. Can y'all handle that? I ain't say I'm tripping, I'm dipping or slipping. But I just said, I realized, like, yo, I'm 53 years old, and I need to talk to somebody. Are y'all with me? Amen. That, that's for somebody. Let's read. It says the Word teaches what? That trials and pain, what are they? They're a part of life. It says what? But if we, oh, it's amen. I thought it said preserve too. If we persevere, amen, and preserve. I'm with you. Come on, somebody. How many know when you persevere, you preserve? Amen. A, a pastor can make anything sound good. Let's read it. says what? If we persevere, what? Those trials. Read with me. And what? And pain will lead to, come on, talk to me, guys. It'll lead to what? It'll lead to maturity and? Let's read it. says what? Today, y'all can start clapping already. Today, we're going to continue to understand that we, read with me, that we can't wait to grow up and why God allows your growing pain. Give God a shout of praise, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it don't feel good. Guess what? If you persevere and get preserved, come on, somebody. What's trying to kill you is actually going to mature you. Are y'all right? Y'all all right? Amen. Come on. Pa, pa, on. On Wednesday, come on up here, Theo. On, on Wednesday, I, 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 I shared something and actually kind of uh, the Lord kind of gave me a correction because I was talking about um, something called, uh, I, I talked about levels of spiritual growth. And the Lord actually corrected me, and he says they're not levels, they're layers. Y'all with me? So, so, so when we grow spiritually, you know, in the natural it could be levels, but, but it's a little different because in the spirit, in the spirit world, world, in the spirit realm, we're going to find out that when you grow through one thing, that God actually through that growth, he prepares you for the next thing, but he doesn't want to want you to lose the first thing. Does that make sense? And, 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 and so, so I, I talked a bit about this on Wednesday. Um, and for those of you that weren't there, because some of you weren't there, the Holy Spirit said, I need you to recap this. Amen? And so, so here are four, la four layers. Somebody say four layers of spiritual growth. The first layer is called infancy. Somebody say infancy. Amen. And so, so this is my son, Theodore Winsley uh, the second. Amen. Let's give God a shout of praise for Theo. This is, actually, this is actually Officer Winsley. Come on, somebody. And, and this shirt that he has on is, was actually his, his, uh, his cadet shirt uh, when he was going through the academy. And, and this will represent infancy. And so in other words, let's read. What is infancy? Infancy is the first layer. Infancy, well, let's read. When, when we are spiritually infant, watch this, we need what? We need biblical instruction and consistent exposure to the Bible to grow. We also found out that when we are spiritual babes, that when we're in the infancy stage, and this is why it's layers, not levels, number one, an infant or someone who is starting off with the first layer is innocent. We found out that, that spiritual babes are innocent. Adam and Eve in the garden, they weren't perfect. They were innocent. Does that make sense? And when we sinned, guess what, guess what the first thing we lost? Our innocence. The reason why babies are innocent is because they don't have a memory. Ooh, y'all hear me? And they don't have a memory because they don't have a past. I don't know whose who's little baby. I saw somebody's baby in, in, the, uh, in, in the walkway or in the foyer the other day, and I said to the baby, how was heaven? Because how many of you know that's, that's where they were? But the baby looked at me like, I don't remember. <laughs> but this is also amazing that how many of you know that when you get born again, when you get saved, 
you become spiritually, watch this, you become spiritually an infant and you are innocent because guess what? You can shout on this one because you no longer have a past. Somebody give God a shout of praise that when you got born again, come on. So, some, some of y'all, ain't, some of y'all ain't, ain't shouting and clapping loud enough. Some of y'all acting like, you, like your past wasn't raggedy and stank. Talk to me. That, that when you got born again, God caused you to become innocent because your past passed away. How many of you know that the Bible tells us that his mercy is new every morning? Every day you wake up, every day you acknowledge God, you're still a babe. Is this making sense? And so watch this, it says here, it says here, but we must avoid what? An infant must avoid what? Isolation and carnal connections. Because guess what? How many of you know we're going to find out that spiritual growth is a team sport? You cannot grow spiritually by yourself. Are y'all with me? The, the Bible says that God places, uh, God places uh, the solitary, uh, or, and solitary means the single, it, it, God places those who are alone into families. Somebody give God a shout of praise that you're so glad that you go to the family church. I'm so glad that I'm not by myself. And, and, and so it's important. The reason why I, I'm going back over this, and I, need, I want you to see that this is layers, it's not levels. Because also when you are a spiritual, spiritual infant, not only are you uh, innocent, um, you also are simple. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't with me. See, one of the reasons why some of you have lost your joy in life is because you lost the simplicity. Talk to me. Come on now. How many know one of the reasons why babies are, babies are, are always smiling and happy? If you feed them, talk to me. Why babies are always smiling and happy? Because they're simple. Come on, it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot to make them content. Come on, you think I'm talking about babies. I'm talking about you. It it, it doesn't take a lot for them to recognize I have everything I need. How many of you know that God doesn't want you to lose the infancy stage in your spiritual life? Jesus says, watch this, the only way that you're going to see the kingdom is if you stay a child. There's a part of you. That still has to stay teachable and still has to be hopeful. Am I talking to anybody? Is this making any sense? This is review. Watch this. And so here is the second layer. Come on, let's put on the the next layer. Because how many of you know that after Theo went through his first academy, then he became a Sleo. Come on, somebody. And they used to call him uh, Theo the Sleo. And and, and Sleo is, what is that? What's it stand for? Special Law Enforcement Officer. Come on, somebody. And and so he was part-time. Talk to me. He didn't didn't give him a gun. Y'all with me? And and, and so so that represents the second layer. What's it called? Are y'all with me? Y'all get anything? It represents the second layer, and it's called childhood. Watch this. And how many of you know that when we were a child, we need submission to spiritual leadership? and accountability in order to grow. So, so guess what? Here's the whole point. That's why you need to come to church because you need to learn how to be who God called and created you to be. Is this making sense? And, and, and here's the point. In, watch here. But we got to avoid emotional instability and spiritual complacency. How many of you know, watch this, when you don't eat, when you don't do the things that are necessary to grow, you get emotional. Talk to me. You get in your feelings. And, 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 and that's, a very, good, that's a, a very good temperature read that watches that, that things that the word has already settled, but you're still emotional about them, it means that you're still a child in that area. Is this making sense? Come on, give God a shout of praise. Come on, this is review. After Theo became a Sleo, come on somebody, then, then Theo became a full-time police officer. Come on somebody. And, and, and watch this, and, and that's the third layer. The third layer is adolescence or the young adult. Are y'all with me? And so, so in other words, guess what? The adolescent or spiritually or young adult, guess what? They're grown, but they're still growing. Are you with me? They, they got some strength. They gave them a gun. Come on, somebody. We couldn't bring it in the church. They gave them a gun. Talk to me. That's why, that's why, watch this, that's why he has a bulletproof vest. Y'all didn't catch that. See, how many of you know that when you get a weapon... You also need more protection. Oh, y'all hear me? See, that's why the Bible says that, that how many of you know that, that God has given you words? They're your weapons, but you better have your shield of faith at the same time. 
It says, watch this, that they have developed strength and they need to engage in what? Talk to me. Well, see, how many of you know that, that there is a level of your spiritual maturity that, watch this, that now it's time for you to realize, guess what? There's a war going on. You have an enemy. Are y'all with me? You have an enemy. There's someone trying to kill you. Jesus said it this way. He said, guess what? Watch this. He said that the devil only comes to steal, to kill, and he only comes to destroy you. But Jesus says, but don't worry about it, baby. I came that you could have life because you're growing up and that you can have it more abundantly. But the only way, watch this, as you grow up, for you to have that life is you have to engage in warfare. Is this okay? How we doing, y'all? Watch this, and it says here, it says they need to engage in spiritual warfare to grow, but they got to avoid pride. Because guess what, you look cute, and you got all this stuff on, but don't be smelling yourself. Talk to me. Watch this, don't, don't think that what's on you has made you. Understand, Jesus said it this way, to whom much is given, I'm talking to you, we ain't talking to Theo, to whom much is given... Much is now required. That wasn't Spider-Man. Come on, y'all think Spider-Man said that they got that from Jesus. To whom much is given, much is required. So you must avoid pride that comes from self-reliance. Don't get so grown that you think you can do it without God. Don't get so grown that you don't think I need instruction. Don't get so grown that you don't think you need an anointing. Don't get so grown that you can do it because you got a gift. My Bible says that guess what? Gifts come without repentance. Gifts don't make you special. It makes you a target. Y'all getting some out of this. Come on, this is just review. I still got a whole sermon to give you. And then watch here. And then there's spiritual maturity. Come on, somebody. Guess what? One day Theo, Theo is going to be an officer. Come on, somebody. A sergeant. Now say it then. Tell me. What you going to be? A lieutenant. Come on, somebody. Do you want, are, you, are you afraid to go further? <laughs> Chief of police. Talk to me. See, watch this spiritual maturity. Watch this. This is when you determine to reflect God's character by enduring hardships and being willing to, watch this, to disciple other people. See, watch this. You ain't grown if you can't help nobody. Oh, come on now. Are y'all hearing me? And watch this. And you can't help nobody living in your mama's house. You, you, you can't help nobody uh, uh, until, guess what, until you have matured and you've taken responsibility of what God has given you and now uh, ain't nobody telling you to be perfect, but now you're ready to help somebody else. Is this okay? Let's read. It says you must avoid ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit and conviction. In other words, stop ignoring the Holy Spirit's voice. And how many of you know that oftentimes the Holy Spirit speaks to you through the voice of conviction? People say, you know, the, the Lord, you know, Pastor, you talk about you hearing voices and God talk to you. He don't talk to me like that. Yes, he does. He tells you no all the time. He tells you that ain't right. He tells you, sit down. Don't go in there. Shut your mouth. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Let's thank you for Theo. Thank you, officer. Are y'all ready? Somebody shout, I'm ready. To understand the purpose for pain. Come on, Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Let's read it. It says, What? And unto Adam, this is after mankind fell. How many of you know that guess what? That God, when He created us, He created us to not to fall, but He knew we would. Can I say that again? And it's important to understand that God's omnipotent, om, omniscience does not stop our free will. Are you with me? Just because God knows what you're going to do, it doesn't mean that you didn't have an opportunity to choose. Come on, I'm, I'm talking to somebody theologically, because some of y'all in our immaturity, we think that because God knows, well, we don't have a free will. The devil is a liar. You do have a free will, but God is God. Does this make sense? And says what? And unto Adam, read me, what happened? And unto Adam, he said what? Because thou hast what? Come on, because thou hast what? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy Wife, all the men said, I knew I shouldn't have listened to her. Hey Amen. Let me correct, let me correct that. Don't, don't get you, like I said last, last week, don't get your lip busted. Ladies said, don't get your lip busted. See, there is nothing wrong with listening to your wife. Watch this. 
after you've heard from God. Or not listening, meaning hearkening. Because you're supposed to listen to her. But watch this. But she's not supposed to lead you. Come on, come on. And all the ladies said. See, because gentlemen, how many times do we do something and say, well, you told me. And she's like, well, but did you hear from God? So let's read. It says what? And unto Adam he said what? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife with me and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded you. Come on. I, your wife wasn't even there, y'all Bible scholars. The woman was not there. It was not her fault. And all the ladies give God a shout of praise. The woman was not there when the instructions were given. She wasn't even created. So that way you can't blame her. Let's read. It goes on. It says what? And thou hast eaten of the tree, what? Which I commanded thee, saying what? Thou shalt not eat of it, because it's cursed. It says what? And thou cursed is the ground for thy sake in what? In sorrow or in pain. Thou wilt eat of it all the days of your life. We, we got to understand, what's the purpose for pain? Why does God allow the pain that you are growing through? Somebody say, why does God allow the pain that I'm growing through? See, here's the difference. You have to decide, I'm not going to go through it. I'm going to grow through it. Are you with me? See, because here's the problem. You could say, well, I've been going through this all my life. But God is saying, but now it's time for you to grow through this. Let's read. It says, watch this. Are y'all with me? Pain is the signal that something is wrong and it needs to be fixed. This is why God allows your growing pains. Many of us, without this revelation, how many of you know, you know what we do? We ignore the pain and we never go see the doctor. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, can, I, can I say that again? We, we ignore the pain because here, here's something that you need to understand. If you keep ignoring the pain, something will go numb. And numb doesn't mean that I don't have a problem. Numb means that something is dying. Come on, let's keep reading. So there are three benefits of pain. Somebody say there are three benefits to this pain that I'm growing through. Somebody make some noise if you're growing through some pain. Some pain or some uncomfortability. It's all connected. Here we go. Let's read. Here are the three benefits. Number one, watch this. That pain actually protects. Pain actually protects. Why? Because it causes you to remember something you forgot. Talk to me. Come on. How, how many of you have experienced pain and it caused you to remember, whoa, wait a second. I actually forgot that I'm not supposed to do that. Talk to me. I actually forgot that I did this out of order. Talk to me. Come on. Come on. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says that they should know God before they know you in dating. Y'all don't enjoy that. Y'all get quiet. I ain't scared of none of y'all. Dating is not evangelistic. Talk to me. You don't date somebody and uh, I'm going to bring them to the Lord. No, you're bringing them to you first. And so watch this. And so when we experience pain, God is using this pain to protect you because he wants you to remember, oh my gosh, I, I need to remember the thing I forgot. Is this making sense? And, and, and the reason why, Holy Spirit is telling me the reason why some of us are, are quiet in the room and we're not, we're not shouting and excited about this part. Here's why. Because oftentimes we want to blame the pain. Instead of taking responsibility that this is my pain that God is using and I'm going to allow it to work for me. Somebody say, this is my pain. Somebody say, this is my pain that God is using, and I'm going to let it work. Here's number two. Let's read. Watch this. So number one, it protects. Number two, it draws us closer to God. Somebody say, I know that's right. See, but here's the deal. Here's the thing. Because it's supposed to draw you closer. It's not supposed to just cause you to use him to make it stop. Uh, see, in other words, watch this. That pain didn't work if you didn't allow that pain to keep you with God. Instead of just when the pain stopped, you went back to doing what you was doing. We okay? Come on, let's read. It says what? It draws us closer to God. Read me. It says what? Pain pushes us to rely on God's strength because you are now aware 
that you are weak. You've been weak the whole time. Now you needed some pain to remind you. Now we needed some pain. Is this okay? Because understand, the, he, he, here, here's the reason why the first thing that we find out is that we need pain because pain is a signal that something is wrong and it needs to be fixed. And so often we'll just keep, you know, I, I saw something on social media. Uh, somebody was driving a Jeep and, uh, and it was driving it out of a, uh, out of a, um, a garage and it had a boot on it and it was just dragging the boot. And how many of you know in the spirit that's what we'll do? A boot, y'all know what a boot is? A, a boot means you ain't paid a ticket and you ain't supposed to be driving it, but we get in the car anyway and we just drive the thing and drag the boot. And we don't realize, watch this, we don't realize that, that we're dragging something that's bringing pain that we should have just allowed the payment to take away. Here we go. You, I'm almost done. Y'all, y'all getting anything out of this? All right, so... So what, what does pain do? Number one, it does what? It protects. Number two, it does what? Watch this. Number three, watch this. It's supposed to mature your behind. Talk to me. If we allow the process, it will mature you. Watch this. Here's why. Let's read. It says what? When real pain hits, playtime is over. Oh, are y'all with me? Can y'all, y'all hear me? When, when real pain hits you, now it's time, hey, 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 I, I got to grow up. I got to stop playing. This is serious. Something's going to die. Something's going to end. Something's not going to be birthed. That's supposed to be birthed. And this pain is reminding me, I'm going to stop playing. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to stop playing. Come on, let's read. There are three lessons. So those are three reasons, and now there are three lessons, read me, that you must learn from your pain that brings us into maturity. Because even though that there are three things that pain does, if you don't learn the lesson, you're going to stay immature. Somebody say, if I don't learn this lesson, I'm going to stay stuck. Somebody say, I ain't going to stay stuck. Come on, here we go, watch this. Number one, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 1, it says what? Be what? Come on, number one, it says be what? See, how many of you know, watch this, that because this is not a game, because this is not a joke, stop, stop treating it common. Come over this way. Because this is not a game, because it is not a, a joke, stop treating it like it doesn't matter. Let's read, it says what? Be careful to follow how many? Come on, be careful to follow how many? Not just the ones that you like. Talk to me. Not just the things that make you feel good. How many of you know that in obeying God, sometimes it's uncomfortable? In obeying God, sometimes it hurts. God in your maturity will say, okay, that's enough of that. It's time for you to give that up. It's time for you to stop doing that. It's time for you to stop dressing this way. I ain't scared of y'all. It's time for you to stop speaking the way you've been speaking. It's time for you to stop being quiet when you're supposed to open your mouth. Come on, let's read. He says what? So that you may what? Come on, ca- catch me. So that you may what? So that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised you what? On oath to your ancestors. Here's lesson number one that you got to learn. You must learn how to receive revelation from God during this pain. During this time. It's time for you to wake up and realize that even during this uncomfortable time, God's talking to you. God's speaking to you. And guess what? And he's trying to give you revelation. He's trying to give you revealed truth, not just to get out of this situation, but so you can enter into the place that he's already planned. Come on, let's read. It says what? It says the very thing, watch this, the very thing, I I said this in the prayer, the very thing that feels like it's killing you now, God will use it to bring life and increase into your future. Are you with me? I know it's hurting. I know it's uncomfortable. It's not going to kill you, but it will transform you into who you're supposed to be in the future. 
How many of you know that some of you, some of you, the reason why you haven't gotten promoted is because you won't let the pain grow you up? And God cannot afford for a child to sit in the seat that a grown folk is supposed to be in. Come on, here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We're still going. Verse 2, it says what? Come on, it says what? It says, remember how the Lord your God, what did he do? He led you. How did he lead you? Come on, how did he lead you? See, come on, it takes maturity to let him take you all the way. A real man and a real woman, how many of you know, it, 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 a, a child can possess anything. Y'all didn't enjoy that one. A child can get anything. An adult has to maintain it. An adult has to see that thing all the way. Let's read. It says what? Remember how the Lord your God, what did he do? He led you all the way where? Into the wilderness. For how long? These 40 years to do what? Come on, y'all. Y'all got quiet. To do what? To humble and test you in order to know what was in God's heart? No. How many of you know that this pain is bringing out what's really in your heart? Y'all with me? See, this pain is actually allowing you to see that you're unforgiving. This pain is allowing you to see you're selfish. Oh, y'all ain't, ain't with me. As a matter of fact, watch this. If you stay immature, pain makes you selfish. Talk to me. Because how, how many of you know, watch this. If you stay immature, when you're hurting, you're the only one you're thinking about. When you're, when you're hurting, you're the only one you're worrying about instead of allowing God to grace you through this pain because ain't none of this about you anyway. Is this making sense? Come on, let's read. Watch this. He says here, to humble you whether or not you would keep his commandment. Verse, watch here. Number, verse 3, it says what? He did what? He humbled you. Read me. Causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna. Oh, y'all hearing me? I'm trying to tell you that it's time for you to realize that, one, that see, see you know, there are pe people that, that, that preach, you know, blab it and grab it, name it and claim it, and prosperity. That's not biblical. Sometimes God will let you not eat. Because you've been eating something you weren't supposed to be eating. And God said, I'll let you go hungry. Because I never told you to eat that. It's not good for you. And now that you get good and hungry, then God says, now are you ready to eat? Oh, y'all with me? Now are you ready to receive? Now do you have a taste for what I've been cooking? Let's read. It says what? Which neither you nor your ancestors has known what? To what? To teach you what? That man does not live. Come on, y'all hear me? Read me. Read with me. What? That man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Sometimes when you experience hunger pains because God has shut off the, the, the milk, I'm not going to let you eat candy no more. Now what I want to know is, are you ready to feed off of the Word? Here's number two. Are y'all getting anything out of this? We're almost done. Let's read. It says what? We must learn. There it is. We got to learn what? Some of y'all didn't want to say it. We got to learn what to be what? See, humility is the ability, watch this, to place what God says and what God does above you. Humility is the realization that, that my life isn't even about me. And when I realize it's about him, I get to live. Let's read. It says what? We must learn humility. What is needed to become totally dependent. Watch this. On, come on. Oh, Y'all mess with me. All right, here we go. I'll, I'll read from the notes. Uh, catch up with me. Humility is necessarily to become totally dependent upon, read your notes. To become totally dependent on the provision, there it is, of God. Humility is the foundation for miracles. Guess what? When you start realizing it isn't about you, you'll start to see the miracles that God's already doing. You'll start to realize, oh my goodness, I still got, 
I still got the lights on. Talk to me. I'm still married. My children are still alive. Y'all with me? You're so busy about what you want, and you haven't realized the miracles that God has done to get you what you have. Come on, let's read. It says what? You'll never read me. You'll never eat manna or bread from heaven as long as you are too proud to eat anyone's cooking. I need you to catch that because some of y'all say, come on, Tareen. Some of y'all say, I ain't eating that. Y'all didn't hear me. Some of you judge the vehicle that God is using to bring the blessing. I don't really bang with them, and I don't really like that, and that isn't that cool, and they're white. Talk to me. They're black. They're Latino. I, I've gotten to some because now I've got to name all of them. They're, they're, they're something else. And God is saying, with your prideful self, go ahead and stay hungry because that's the person that I graced to feed you. That's the person who's the cook for today. Let's read. It says, what? You'll never eat manna or bread from heaven. What? As long as you're too proud to eat anyone's cooking. Pastor Don, come up. And think that you are what? Smart enough to do it. What? To do it your way and not his. Verse 4. Let's read. It says, what? Your clothes did not wear out. Read me. Your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Come on. God's kind of trying to remind you. What? Know what? Know then. What? Know then in your heart. That as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord does what? Come on. So the Lord does what? So the Lord disciplines you. And now please hear me. I'm not saying that God is the source of the pain. But watch this. But in some instances, God isn't stopping the pain. Let's read. It says what? Observe the command of the Lord your God. Doing what? Walking in. Come on. Walking in. Walking in obedience to him and, and, and revering him. Verse 7, it says what? The Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, a land with streams. Somebody receive this. A land that has deep springs gushing out into valleys and hills. Here's the third lesson. We must learn how to expect and to walk in the power of God's favor. Even though it hurts, God said, I can turn this whole thing around. Stop allowing the pain to stop you from believing. Stop allowing the pain to cause you not to realize that you're still God's favorite. And because you are still God's favorite, God said, I can favor you. Right in this season, right in this place. Verse 8, it says, it, read your, lift your hands. It says, a land with wheat and barley, vines and figs, trees and pomegranates, olive oil and honey. It says, a land where bread will what? Will not be scarce and you will lack, and you will lack a land where the rocks and the iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. It says, when you what? When you have eaten and are, when you have eaten and are when you have eaten and are satisfied then now guess what right in the middle of my pain you can stand on your feet and still praise God and still know he's good and still know he's for me and still believe God you're gonna favor me right through this thing because I'm not a child anymore I'm walking in maturity I'm ready to obey you because this was never about me anyway. Can somebody give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. As the word was going forth, I believe that there are some people that God was speaking to. With every head bow and every eye closed, and as we focus on ourselves and just making sure that we understand that there is a growing process. 
But there are some people that may have said, Pastor, I haven't even started growing. I need to accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior so that I can even start the process because I've been doing this thing all by myself. And I realized that, you know what? <laughs> I'm not even in the growing process. With every head bow and every eye closed, if you know that you've never given your life over to Jesus and you're saying, you know what, even though I might be grown, I need a savior. I need to go through the process. I need to just slow things down. And the first step, I need to receive him as my Lord and as my savior. With every head bow and every eye closed, if that's you, and you know that the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart and you know that you need to say the prayer. You need to repeat that out of your mouth and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. I simply want you to raise your hand. I'm not going to call on you. I just want to know who I'm praying for. If you know you've never said the prayer, you've never received Jesus, I want to just see who I'm praying for. If that's you online and you know you've never received Jesus, you can raise your hand and that's a show that you need a Savior. And some of you may have said, listen, pastor, I actually said the prayer. But you know what? I, I've been stunted in the growing process. I, yeah, I'm really struggling in my relationship with him. I see your hand. You may say, I need, I need to make sure that I'm in the proper position because I need to release and I need to submit myself to him and I need to make sure that I'm growing in a healthy place. If that's you and you desire to rededicate your life back to him, I just want to see who I'm praying for. You can simply slip your hand in the air. I promise you I'm not going to call on you. I see your hand. I see your hand. Hands are being raised. I don't care how old you are in the natural. You may have said, listen, I'm stunted and I'm at an infancy stage and I should be further along in my walk with Jesus. I see your hand. I see your hand. It's, it's, it's okay. I see your hand. It's okay that you've gotten to this place where you've acknowledged where you are in the process. You may put your hands down. There were quite a few hands that went up. I simply want you to repeat this prayer with me. And for those of you who are already born again and you know Jesus, you should be interceding right now. There are people to your left, to your right, that are making a big decision for Jesus. For those of you who have raised your hand, I want you to say, Dear Jesus, come into my life. Or I want to rededicate my life back to you. Thank you, Jesus, for being my Lord and being my Savior. I believe that you died on the cross, but I also believe that you were raised in victory. Thank you, Jesus, for being my Savior. And I want to exchange everything that I am for all that you are. I've realized I can't do it by myself. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life saving me and setting me free in Jesus name amen oh come on let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise that was a big deal amen if you answer to any of those calls whether you gave your life to Christ for the first time or you rededicated your life they're going to put up a QR code and I want you to scan that QR code because we need to be praying for you that simply gives us the right to call your name out and to be praying for you. If you can scan that QR code or if you don't have a device, raise your hand and the ushers will pass out to you a connect card so that we can be keeping you in prayer and cheering you on as you are on this journey called salvation. Also, we'll give you some additional information because how many of you know babies need to be fed? Or people that are stunted in their growth, they need to know where they are. And we need to, uh, you need to allow the Holy Ghost to speak to you in that place. And so we want to give you some information. Also, if there's anybody that said, Pastor, I need a church. I need a church home. 
If that's you today and you desire for the family church to be your church home, you know that the Holy Ghost spoke to you and you know that you are home, I simply want you to raise your hand. We're not going to call on you. We just want to acknowledge. Amen. We want to acknowledge that you, you're saying that this is going to be your church home. Amen. Also, if you're watching online and if you made any decisions for Jesus, or if you even said, hey, I want to be a part of the family church, online church experience, we want to welcome you into this local body called the family church. Come on, let's give the Lord another big hand clap of praise for those decisions that were made here today. Glory to God. Can we give our Lord and Savior Jesus another round of, a hand, round of applause? Glory to God. Glory to God. We are still in worship this morning. Y'all look like y'all going some throwing, growing pains this morning, but we are pushing through, right, with Jesus? Praise the Lord. So we're still in worship. Um, um, we're transitioning to tithes and offerings. The tithe is 10% of your gross earnings, and the offering is between you and the Lord. As you can look on your screen, you can scan the barcode. There are plenty of ways and opportunities to give. We have, we can, you can mail in your checks at 333 Preston Avenue. We also have text to giving at 84321. You can also cash app. You can cash app your giving at uh, dollar sign TFC New Jersey. Make sure in the, the, the memo part, you state where you would like to give your, uh, uh, where you would like to give and your name and your email address so we can uh, make sure it designated under your profile. And also, if you need an envelope, if you're in the building and you need an envelope, please raise your hands and the ushers will get that to you. Awesome. And also, we can give electronically by scanning that barcode. You can download our app or you can go to our website at www.thefamilychurchnj.com for those of you who are online who would like to give online. So we'll pray, and then there's designated baskets to my left and to my right that you can come up and you can give and do it. Father, we just thank you. We praise you, Lord God. We thank you for uh, another opportunity to be obedient, to be yes, to grow through the pains, Lord God. Yes, we want to do what you have said that we are supposed to do, Lord. We want to align with you, Father. I thank you that the tithes and the offerings today are just representations of each and every person's yes and obedience to you. So, Father, we thank you and we declare a, a, a fold back on it, a fold in return, pressed down, shaken together, and rub it over, Lord God. We thank you in the name of Jesus that we will receive all that you have for us because of our yes and obedience to you. In Jesus' name, you can come up and give your giving.
announcements for you this morning. We want to remind a few, uh, the Catalyst team meeting. We have a meeting on October 9th. Give it up to those who serve. We have a mandatory meeting on October 19th uh, here in the building. It starts at, uh, starts at 9 a.m., 9 a.m. So here in the building, please join us. If you are on the Catalyst team, we would like to see you there. It is mandatory. Um, also, we have Good Eats Cafe. Has anybody checked out the cafe? On the other side lately, yeah. Yes, please, um, uh, after service, go ahead over, patronize the cafe. They have a menu. Um, I know there's a QR code you can scan and, scan and get the menu. Um, lots of different things, smoothies, chicken, a bunch of different stuff. Um, and also, Leslie, can you tell everybody what this month is? Absolutely, it is Hispanic Heritage Month. Make some noise yeah. for our Latino and Hispanic community, amen. And it is coming to an end on Tuesday, this Tuesday, October 15th. De parte de nuestros pastores, pastors Ted and Don Winsley y la familia, la iglesia familiar, le damos saludos a la comunidad latina y hispana. Y eh, lo queremos mucho y recuerdan que la iglesia familiar es donde ustedes pertenecen. Can you tell us what you just said? Absolutely. <laughs> I said, on behalf of our amazing pastors, Pastors Ted and Don Winsley, and the entire TFC congregation, TFC congregation, Woo! make some noise. We want to just send greetings to our Latino and Hispanic community. And we said, we, uh, I said we love them and that we, uh, tell, we're inviting them because this is the place where they belong. Amen? Amen. Amen. And... And, and also, can we, do we all know what else this month is? Yes, yes. Pastor Appreciation If you Day. appreciate your pastor, stand to your feet. Come on. Stand to Come your on. feet. Let's Our honor pastors. the gifts. Yes. Let's honor the gifts. We give honor where honor is due. We are so humbled and privileged to have yes. such amazing pastors. Yes, such good gifts he give. Praise the Lord, everybody. Pastors, we have letters of acknowledgement uh, on behalf of you being chaplains from the department, police department of Township of Cherry Hill. And it simply states that they would like to thank you, Pastors Ted and Dawn Wensley, for your tireless efforts and what you do for the community, what you do for the police department, and for the overall sanctifying of the word to those that serve. You have served the emotional, you have served social services, personal assistance with them, and they are just ever so grateful to have you being a part of their community. During this National Pastoral Appreciation Month, they take the time to reflect and thank you on behalf of Chief of Police Robert F. Kemp of Cherry Hill. The second one is from the Department of Public Safety for Pensacola Police. And also, they would like to express their heartfelt appreciation for your assistance, for all the efforts over the years, for being chaplains and being a support, contributing to the ongoing and fostering positive relationships between the department and the community. And again, engaging with the officers, with the community, demonstrating commendable commitment to public service. And they thank you with all appreciation and future endeavors and collaboration from, respectfully, Sergeant Gavin Rossner of the Pensacola Police Department. Woo! If we can all stand to our feet once again, Pastor Ted and Pastor Dawn, can you come, yeah, come on up. Come on up, can we, yeah, let's clap it up for our pastor. Woo! 
So, so on behalf of, of all of us, TFC family, we would like to give you this is this is a token of our appreciation. We, us, all of us, the family church has collected for pastor appreciation roughly, just roughly, $1,600 for our pastors. So we want you to, to take this. This is going directly to our pastors. Also, if you have not had an opportunity, you have an opportunity to give right in our app and our link, or you can do it, donate it all month into the boxes outside, and you can give your cards and your appreciations to our pastors. But this is or any giving or any given platform that we have, you can do a drop down that says Pastor Appreciation Month. You can do this all month. So roughly right now, $1,600. And this is going directly to you guys to be able to do, <laughs> to do whatever it is that you want to, however you want to relax, however you want to enjoy. It's just an experience. You can get a big massage. <laughs> you can do that too. <laughs> so we love and we appreciate you. And on behalf of the family church, we want to thank you for being such amazing gifts to this body. So Amen. we love you. Praise God. Amen. Well, well we want to say, you, you, can, you can stay up here. We, we want to say um, that first of all, if, if we are amazing pastors, make some noise if we're amazing pastors. Amen. It's only because we have an amazing church. And so, so we, we thank you for just uh, allowing this to be easy because it really, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but you make it very easy because you are worth um, the effort and the pain um, because it is absolutely a pleasure. So pass it on. No, I just I also wanted to um, um, ditto what you just said. First of all, um, we love doing what we do, and uh, if we didn't get a dime from it, we would still do what we're doing. So thank you for your generosity. Amen. Thank you for um, seeing value in what we do. And like I said, we're just going to keep going until the wheels fall off. Amen. <laughs> and they're not going to fall off. Praise God. Amen. Were you blessed by the word? Were you blessed by the service? Amen. Amen. So if you could just be seated for one more moment, let's give it up for our pastors one more time. Praise God. We love them. Okay. So, so if you can uh, just give us one more minute for the video announcements. Hey, pastors. Happy Pastor Appreciation Month. We thank you that from Temple Emmanuel to now, you've always been consistent, loving, hard, challenging, but you always push us to be who we are in Christ. And we thank you for that. We could never, ever repay you for everything that you've given us. So we just want to say we love you. And happy Pastor Appreciation Month. Peace. Hey, Pastor Don. Hey, Pastor Ted. This is Ori Edwards on behalf of my family, Promise, Joyce, Grace, and Joshua. Really want to say we love you guys. You guys have no idea how much influence you guys have over our lives. Every day when I get up, I, I think about what my life would have been without the family church. Especially I remember the day that I thought I lost everything and you corrected me and you say, Hey, Ori, doesn't matter what happened to you. You still have the most important someone and that's God. And that just changed my whole perception about life. No matter what happens, God is still in me, for me, and with me. And it doesn't get better than that. So, Pastor, I hope you enjoy yourself today. I love you guys. Uh, Pastor Dawn, I love you. You guys have no clue what impact you guys have in our lives. We love you. Peace. Hey, Pastors. I sure do appreciate both of you. I love you. I'm so grateful and thankful that you are my spiritual parents. Thank you for being the conduit to my freedom, to my deliverance, and um, I hope you enjoy your day. Um, on behalf of me and my family, we love you. Pastors Ted and Dawn Winsley, happy Pastor Appreciation Day, eight years at the family church. Uh, I think it's 12 years for you being uh, my personal pastor uh, and uh, Priscilla's pastor. And I am just so honored to be able to share expressions of love and honor 
and respect and appreciation and esteem and admiration uh, for our um, opportunity to be under your leadership. I so um, uh, just just am grateful for leaders who um, represent the word of God unapologetically, uh, that preach the word of God unapologetically, and who aspire to have their lives be examples of what it means to be consistent, faithful servants. You have a heart of servanthood, and you do it publicly, and you do it privately. Continue to endure, continue to dominate, and continue to stay focused on what God has called you to do. You are impacting thousands and thousands of lives, and you're only just getting started. So we love you from the Howie family, uh, for, for all of my brothers and sisters that I serve with at the family church and in our broader community. Um, happy Pastor Appreciation Day. We love you. Happy anniversary, Pastor Ted and Pastor Don. It has been an amazing um, four years for me, but eight years for the family church. I have learned so much from you. I have grown exponentially. I look forward to coming to church. I look forward to serving because you and Pastor Don are exemplary examples of what stewardship, of what pastorship, of what genuine love looks like. So I can't wait to see what um, the next years hold for you. Nothing but the best God has in store for you. And I am so honored to be part of the journey. Happy anniversary. Hey, Pastor Ted, Pastor Dawn, I love you. Happy anniversary. Happy Pastors Appreciation Day. Pastors, I appreciate you so much, especially in this last year where I've had so much tragedy in my life. You've taught me how to stand on the word of God. You've taught me how to not put my emotions in it, but to rely on that spiritual and the belief that I have in the Lord. I thank you so much. You are such, such great leaders of your sheep, which is your congregation. Pastors, I love you. I thank you. Happy anniversary and happy Pastors Appreciation Day. Love you. Happy Pastor. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's just stand on our feet. Were you blessed by the word today? Make some noise if God blessed you today. Once again, on behalf of Pastor Dawn, we are, once again, we want to thank you for just all of the demonstrations of love for our anniversary and for Pastor Appreciation Month. Well, come on, let's let, go ahead and grab your neighbor next to you, only if you know them. If not, you don't have to grab a stranger, although we're all family. Come on, let's pray the benediction. Father, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, that for your love and your plan to grow us through the pain, and we thank you, Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus that there will be signs and wonders that follow this preached word. We thank you, God, that pain is a signal that something needs to change. And we thank you, God, that things are changing. And for that, we give you glory. We honor you. We praise you in the mighty, matchless name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. His name is, shout his name, Jesus Greet your neighbor with love, and you are free to go. We'll see you next week. God bless you. And remember, the family church is where you belong. Love y'all.